Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I want to talk to you about heavy metals and how they cause multiple chemical sensitivity and histamine and mast cell problems. More mast cell problems, but they do affect the gut, so they do they can cause histamine problems as well. This is a this is a bit of a niche video. Maybe not. Maybe it feels a bit niche to me. This isn't the thing I would do first. If you're if you're in your healing process, heavy metals isn't the first thing I would do. I would I would eliminate mold first. I would focus on that. The thing about mold and the associated mycotoxins is they're really devastating to your body. They are really really sinister in the way that they cause dysfunction in the body and how they keep your body stuck. How they suppress the immune system, how they destroy your gut flora and you 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 need these things. You need these mechanisms to to heal a chronic disease. So I'd say heavy metals is maybe step two, but it's 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 one of these early steps. You know, I'd be looking at heavy metals before we're doing parasites, before we're trying to fix SIBO, before we're trying to do these these later stage things. It's one of the first things I'd be looking at, but it wouldn't be the first. I do I do mycotoxins first. Reason being, your body just prioritizes it. These these all leave the body through the same root through the same mechanism primarily about 90 percent of this is going through your through your bile through your stool um, this follows the the line of the six steps your body uses to detoxify mycotoxins you can check that video out on youtube as well if you haven't already six steps to remove six steps the body uses to to remove mycotoxins metals follow the same pathway and understanding that is going to be really helpful for today's video in helping you understand how it can cause multiple chemical sensitivity and mast cell problems so so basically histamine like problems but they're not actually coming from the gut which is uh, an interesting take on it so i just have to do a little little audio check uh, just before i get started today so just give me a couple of seconds maybe count down from uh, maybe eight that's probably how long it's going to take me so eight seconds let me just check perfect cool hopefully i was less than eight seconds so let's get started how heavy metals cause multiple chemical sensitivity and mast cell problems, and I'm actually going to tell you how to fix it as well. So let, let's look at why this, why this, why this is happening. So it basically comes down to your body is being exposed to more toxicity than it's able to eliminate, and you probably hear all the time like, "Oh, you need to open your detox pathways. You need to open your detox pathways." It's like. And I know you want to like grab the person by the neck. Like, what does it mean? Like, how do I do it? I, I, I'm going to explain that that to you because it's one of those really frustrating things that if you if you hear it and you don't actually know how to do it, you just feel stuck. And you, I don't know what I don't know what that means. So, the reason heavy metals cause, in particular, multiple chemical sensitivity and mast cell problems is when your body is trying to eliminate toxins, it's got a primary mechanism a backup mechanism and a reserve mechanism and the reserve mechanism should never be being used it should all be going through the primary and the backup and it only does the reserve if there's absolute if, if it's like a life or death kind of thing like your body isn't is having to do this to, to stay alive the primary mechanism the, the main way that your body wants to deal with this is the is the six steps that the same six steps that your body uses to remove mold and mycotoxins from your body so working from the top down you've got it takes the the toxins from the the cells and from the the organelles inside the cells so like inside the layers of the mitochondria it takes the these toxins from here out into the bloodstream and from here it moves them from the bloodstream to the liver the liver is like it's like a filter all of your blood all of the blood in your body goes through your liver once every three minutes so you can think in an hour it's going through your liver 20 times so it's like this filter that is constantly trying to pull to toxins and bad things out and what it does is from here, it, it filters these things out and then it packages them up. So it like binds them to different things. Sometimes it, you're, you're binding to like antioxidants like glutathione. Sometimes you're conjugating with bile acids. You're doing a lot of different things. And it basically, it does this process and then it packages them up and it sticks them in your bile. And your bile then concentrates and is stored in your gallbladder. From here, we trigger a, trigger a bile release. So it's like you eat you eat dietary fat. So that's a big important part of this. You eat dietary fat, and it causes a secretion of this bile. The bile is now in your intestine, and now we're moving on to like steps five and six. So the bile is now in the intestine, 
and what needs to happen here is the, the healthy bacteria that you have, so like your lactobacillus and your bifidobacterium and your other beneficial species, your acomensia, your, like all of these different organisms, they, they all have different jobs and they all do different things. One of these really important jobs is they then take this toxin that's in the bile and they remove it and then the bile is reabsorbed. And the bile is very expensive for your liver to make. It's one of the most like metabolically expensive things that it does. And because of this, your body will reabsorb this bile up to nine times. So it's like it squirts it out, it reabsorbs it, squirts it out, reabsorbs it. And you can even be doing this multiple times in the same meal. You know, if you eat a high fat meal, this could happen four or five times in one meal. And every time this bile is being released, your healthy organisms in your gut are supposed to be binding to these toxins and then putting these toxins in either they hold them themselves and then they die and they come out in the poop or they bind them to some kind of binder or to some kind of um, vegetable fiber or or something and then final step is these microbes they then escort this out of the body in the stool and we poop it out that is your body's primary way that it handles heavy metals and also mycotoxins so this is your main pathway. This is where 80 to 90%, that varies a little depending on genetics, but ideally 80 to 90% of your fat soluble toxins will be leaving your body. This is your main mechanism. If this does not work, you are going to have a problem because we do live in somewhat of a polluted world now. You do, you are consistently exposed to toxicity and this pathway while I'm saying it works for mycotoxins and it works for heavy metals, and that like the, my, the the heavy metals is the primary focus today. This is also the same pathway your body uses to remove every single fat soluble toxin on Earth. So this includes all of your plastics. This includes all of your xenoestrogenic compounds. This includes many types of medication, pharmaceutical medications. And you might say, "Oh, I don't take any pharmaceutical medications." You're exposed to them all the time. If you're showering or bathing in in water that's coming from the tap. There are traces of birth control pills. There are traces of heroin and cocaine. They're, they're, like there are, there are drugs everywhere. And even if you're like super, super clean, like you still need to go and walk outside and there's, there's combustion from cars and you're breathing some of that in. Like it doesn't matter how, what you do, you're gonna be exposed on some level. And that's inevitable and that's actually okay. It's not a problem. Even if you go back before all these toxins were man-made, you would still have natural toxins. You'd have mycotoxins, you'd have volcanic eruptions, you'd have wildfires. You know, your body still is, is able to handle these toxins as long as this mechanism is working. So this primary mechanism takes 90%, 80 to 90% of your toxicity. If you, if this isn't working, this is priority number one. And I'm going to, I'm going to go through this in a little bit more detail of how we support these steps. I've already done this in some detail in the six steps your body uses to remove mycotoxins. So again, you can check that out if you want. I'm going to come back to that, but I want to really focus on today. Why, when this system is not working, and then we're going to look at the backup system. Why, when we go into the reserve system, how this causes chemical sensitivities and mast cell activation symptoms. So your, your backup systems, and these are systems your body would prefer not to use because they're just not as good at it and it's harder but it will use them you've got three so these three backup pathways are your urine so you can remove some toxicity through your urine the thing is your urine is water it's water soluble so your body actually has to do a lot of work to break these fat soluble compounds down and this sometimes happens through the stage one and the stage two liver detoxification breaks them down into water soluble compounds that then can be removed through the urine so it's still taking your liver a lot of work. Your liver is still playing a really big role here. And that's a part of that other mechanism. So if that's struggling, urine's also going to struggle. And then finally, you've got the, the, the mucosa of your lungs. So you can remove some toxins through your, through your breath. If this is happening, though, you, do, you are going to be predisposed to different types of lung problems. So this could look like asthma. This could look like um, any kind of respiratory infections. You know, organisms will move in to try to clear toxicity from your body. So if your body is trying to move like 90% of these toxins that are supposed to be coming out and it's doing it through your lungs, they're not really designed for that. Organisms will move in. You'll have respiratory infections, you'll have autoimmune disease in the lungs, asthma, things like that. And the skin. So again, skin, not really great for, for detoxing. Some comes out in the sweat, some will just come out kind of passively. But again, this can cause skin problems. This can cause skin irritation. This can cause uh, eczema and psoriasis. This can cause fungal overgrowth, like in the toenails, you know? A lot of the time, the body stores toxicity in the extremities. So in the, 
in the feet and at the end of the toes and in the hands and like that's where you get the fungal infections because the top they're there to try to help you process those those toxins so we need to we really need to focus on this on this primary pathway but if the primary pathway isn't working we've got this backup pathway which can help if the, even this is being overwhelmed so your primary pathway plus your backup pathway and you still have more toxicity than your body is able to eliminate through these two mechanisms the last mechanism will activate and this is as i said this is your reserve mechanism this isn't really supposed to be used this is not the best way to do things but if your body is drowning in toxicity it will do it because it's the only option that it has and at this stage, the body is activating the immune system to try to handle toxins. So instead of detoxing them and moving them through these other two channels that, that we've mentioned, your body is now going to activate an immune response. And you're going to see this as immune type reactions. So your body is going to be getting, it's going to be developing sensitivities to certain chemicals, sensitivities to certain foods. And you, these, these sensitivities, they're kind of... Um, they're kind of like identified, they're kind of, they're classified as immune immune style reactions. So you think like histamine intolerance, histamine, you know, everyone knows about histamine and allergies and allergy season and pollen. It's about the immune system. Histamine intolerance is an, is an immune dysfunction. MCAS, your mast cells are activating. Your mast cells are smart. They don't, they're not, they're not like these like stupid cells inside your body that are just like, well, I just want to activate and I'm just going to produce loads of histamine. Like they're doing it for a reason. And this is because these first two pathways are blocked or they're, they're overwhelmed. They can't handle the accumulated toxicity. So your mast cells and your other aspects of your immune system are attacking these toxins in your body as if they were like infections. Like it's triggering an immune response in an attempt to try to remove this toxicity from your body. It's the final option that it has. It doesn't do this because it wants to. It does this because... It doesn't have a choice. This is the last mechanism. Like this is the final thing that it can do. And from from this point, if even this is not enough to be able to help your body handle the toxic load that it's being exposed to, it will just develop into symptoms of toxicity. So heavy metal toxicity is very often connected with uh, cognitive problems. So all different types of sensory processing disorders. So on the extreme ends, you've got like autism and things like like multiple sclerosis, a lateral sclerosis, these kinds of things. This is like on the extreme end. This is where you're getting like deposits of mercury in your nervous system, you know, because your body can't, it can't get it out. So it has to store it somewhere. And these are fat soluble. So they have an affinity for fatty tissues. This also looks like chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. So some of this fatty tissue that we also have is in the membrane of our mitochondria. Our mitochondria are like the energy makers. They're the ones that create us energy. If the mitochondria are getting damaged, because these heavy metals are being stored in the mitochondrial membrane because it's a, a, a fatty tissue, you're, you're going to have energy synthesis problems and you're going to have poor post-exercise recovery because your body simply cannot function. It cannot work. And this is where these things are en ending up being deposited. And going, going the other way, so le less severely, but still indicators of these, of these problems, you can have any type of autoimmune disease or any type of autoimmune symptoms. So this could be in the gut, this could be like a Crohn's or a colitis, um, even celiac can be connected here. This could be Sjogren's syndrome, really, really common one. This could be autoimmune based arthritis and skin problems and, and lung issues as, as we mentioned previously. It can be a, a whole wide variety of things. As far as the sensory processing disorders, this can be tinnitus, this can be brain fog, this can be dyslexia, dyspraxia, this feeling of like not having a good balance or not being able to feel where we are in, in space. And this can affect your mood enormously. Heavy metals are super connected with like major depressive disorders and uh, like extreme anxiety, panic attacks. I find that anxiety and panic attacks is a, often more of a, a mycotoxin thing. I find that gives like a more of a panicky feeling and the, the, the heavy metals they follow more into like this, like depressive, more, they feel like slower and more like, it's really unbearable. It's a really low feeling, you know, just this really low feeling of just not being okay. It's like a really deep, deep, deep depression. And it's, it's very interesting when you see this is usually experienced by people that have never felt depressed before, you know, they've had like happy bubbly lives. They really enjoyed themselves. And then all of a sudden they're like, who, who am I now? Like, how am I in this really depressive state? It's chemical.
it, your, your body, it cannot physically function. Like it's, a, it's chemical, you know, and you have to look here first because if you're trying to treat this type of depression with, I don't know, an antidepressant, it just, it's not really going to make that much difference because it, it's chemical. Your body cannot function f physically. It's, it's struggling. So this, this last, absolute last backup mechanism for handling toxicity is your, is your immune system, is your mast cells activating. They're trying to, they're, again, they're trying to help a drowning body from, from drowning. They're trying to stop it from drowning. But focusing here doesn't make any sense because this is not where the problem is. We have to go root cause. So let's go all the way back. So we're not looking at the reserve mechanism. We're not looking at the backup mechanism. Let's look at the primary mechanism that's supposed to handle 80 to 90% of this toxicity. And let's support this because 80 to 90% of your results are going to be found here. So this isn't supporting the, 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 the kidneys and this isn't supporting the immune system. Like these things would come later like you have to support the primary dysfunction you have to look exactly where your body needs the help which is in this first stage this 80 to 90 percent so we have to look at this 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 system so we're going to do it from the bottom up we're going to work from the bottom of this system and work to the top the thing is if you work from the top down and you you do the top things too fast and the things at the bottom too slow you're going to create a bottleneck and you're going to have horrible symptoms. You're going to have Herxheimer reactions. You're going to have detox reactions. And these are, these are actually, this means you're doing it wrong. You should not be having these kinds of reactions. What this means is you've started at the top and the things at the bottom are, are, are not functioning correctly. So we need to start at the bottom and work up. So right at the bottom, you've got your bowels and how your bowels are moving. If you're not having a daily bowel movement, this is focus number one. If your body isn't letting the stool go on a daily basis, you are you are bioaccumulating toxicity. Every time your body tries to do this whole six step process, so it gets the toxins out, it moves them through, filters them through the liver, puts them in the bile, puts them in the gut, it just reabsorbs back into your bloodstream and your body has to do the same thing. So it's like it's doing all of the work and it's making none of the progress. So the bowel movements have to be regular. I have several guides on constipation on my YouTube channel. So you can literally go on Google and type William Dickinson, how to heal constipation. I've got a, a, like a tried and true method that you can follow that works for 80% of people. I've used this method myself. I have, in my one-to-one -one practice, done this with over 100 people, and there are caveats. There are the 20% of people that are more complex, but even in those 20% of people, this still works, like it still helps. So if m maybe in these 20%, you're not getting full resolution of a bowel movement every single day, but you're going from a bowel movement every 10 days, to a bowel movement every three days so problem is still isn't solved but it's so much better like it's it's orders of magnitude better it's a it's a very thorough guide it walks you through how to implement these things so again go on youtube william dickinson how to heal constipation just go on youtube and search that and you will you'll find it. it'll come up as the top video make sure you put my name in there though william dickinson how to heal constipation so that's the first the first step step above that is your microbiome if your microbiome isn't isn't sufficient, if it isn't working, if it isn't doing its job correctly, it is gonna affect your bowel movements, so it's gonna have this effect on this part that's downstream. You know, your, your stool is 80% living in dead bacteria, so if bacteria are missing, you're gonna struggle there. But they also do a really important job of healing the gut lining, improving the gut integrity, and making sure that these toxins aren't reabsorbing. I saw a, a fascinating study, you know, seen as though we're on the, the topic of, of heavy metals. It was looking at heavy metal absorption from fish, you know, from say like tuna, swordfish, like these bigger, more carnivorous fish that are higher in bioaccumulated mercury. And it was talking about how if your gut integrity is strong, so if your gut is not very leaky, the amount of mercury that you absorb from a food is about 8,000% less than someone that has increased intestinal permeability. That's, in, that's enormous. Like, that is where you want to be focusing. You are going to be exposed in your environment. Inevitably, it's going to be happening. You, you're kind of powerless to that. There's some things you can do. You know, you can reduce your exposure. But the best thing you could do would be improve the integrity of your gut. And then you can be exposed and you're going to absorb so much less. And the, 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 the thing that really that determines the health of your gut is the diversity of your microbiome. So the more microbiome diversity you have in your gut, the stronger the stronger your gut. And microbiome diversity is directly inversely correlated with basically every single disease on planet Earth. So 
what that means in layman's terms is the more different types of species of bacteria you have in your gut, the less likely you are to have any single disease, not just, not just gut problems. We're talking autoimmune disease, cancer, um, cardiovascular problems, immune system diseases, chronic fatigue syndrome, every single disease. It's really important. And you can see why, because this is how your body removes toxicity. And if your body is accumulating toxicity, you will get sick. So this is a really important step. Step up from here. So we've gone from six to five. Now we're on four. This is bile flow. Your bile needs to be stimulated to come out of your, of your gallbladder and out of your liver. If you don't eat fat, you cannot stimulate it. This is one reason the low-fat diet is a really bad idea. If you aren't stimulating the bile to be released, you are simply not allowing your body to move the toxins from the liver and the gallbladder into the gut. It needs fat to do this. So the best way you can do this, it's very simple, is just eat 30 grams of fat three times a day. So just make sure you're eating some fat in your meals. You really want to avoid like hydrogenated vegetable oils. They're really unhelpful as far as, first of all, they don't support this process very effectively. But secondly, they actually add a lot of toxicity into your body. A lot of they cause a lot of oxidative damage and that's that that's kind of the opposite of what we're trying to achieve here so you want your saturated fats your coconut oil your olive oil your animal fats your egg yolks your ghee butter tallow whatever you tolerate they're, they're the kind of ones that you want again 30 grams three times a day stimulate the bile to be being released i'd say that's really kind of at a minimum as well from there we go to the liver the health of the liver is really important I'd say one of the most important things in the liver stage is looking at methylation. Your your body needs to be methylating correctly. And methyl nutrients are super involved in production of bile and also handling toxins. You've got stage one and stage two liver detoxification. You can do more research on these. These are, I mean, honestly, they're a bit confusing. They're a bit complicated. You're gonna, it's a, it's a bit hard. Some easy takeaways are, some easy actionable steps at, at this step are, if you do have problems with fats, you do or so say you've had your gall you've had gallstones or you've had your gallbladder removed or you eat fats and you get like abdominal pain or you just aren't absorbing digesting them very well you want to look at first of all i would do some kind of genetic testing to take a look at your methylation status see if you've got like the mthfr mutations see if you've got the bhmt mutations see if you've got like comt and cbs and like check these things really easy to do you can literally go on so i would use 23 and me is the one i used do the test, it's like it's like 80 pounds, $100, very cheap. Get the raw data, upload it to Genetic Genie, and they'll give you a report. You can even send me that in, your, in an email. Support, or actually send it to my testing, testing at williamdickinson.co.uk. Yeah, .co.uk. Send me that, those reports, and I'll even tell you where I think you need to focus. But they're really good. They've got like a little summary at the bottom that, that tells you kind of what, like what you need to do or, or what these things can be connected to. So that's a really nice option it's a really nice place to start methylation status is, is is really really important and that's a really easy way you know super cheap super easy to to get into it you've also got other things like sulfur status in your body is really important for your liver health um you can use like glutathione you can use epsom salt baths nac there's a lot of different things you can do sulfur is super important in those those stage one and stage two liver detoxification juicing is really helpful as well you provide a lot of polyphenols you provide a lot of minerals minerals are really really important there's a lot of different things you can do to support your liver, but your liver health is essential at this stage. From here, you've got the health of your of your blood. So it, th this stage is more about making your blood move and getting your blood to be filtering through your liver, especially your peripheral blood. You know, if you've got blood that you're, if you're sitting all day, your blood pools in your hands and your feet, and it's not circulating very well. So movement is really helpful at this stage. Anything that increases your heart rate is gonna help with moving your blood around your body. So exercise can be helpful. You could also use like heat therapies, like sauna or hot baths. Um, even just going for a walk is a really great option if you have that available to you. And the, the final step is accumulated toxicity inside the cell and, it, and stimulating and encouraging these cells to release the toxins that they're holding into the bloodstream. And I'm gonna say, first of all, if your liver is overloaded, if your liver is already struggling and it cannot handle the toxins that it's being exposed to in the environment, your body intelligently will not let you pull toxins out of the cell. It simply will not let you do it. Your body is intelligent. If it's already struggling with the amount of toxins that it's being exposed to, it will not 
tap into and access your stored toxicity. It simply will not do it. So don't try and force it to do that. You know, when you, if you're going to try and force against your body to try and find healing, when healing is actually your body's natural state, you're going against what your body is trying to do. Make sure that you've focused on those other five steps, particularly from the liver down, you know, liver, gallbladder and bile health, microbiome and frequent bowel movements. Unless these things are actually like dialed in and working correctly, do not do this step. Otherwise you are going to feel really bad and you're not actually going to be making progress with it. You're just going to be fighting against your body. So the, the best things you can do in this stage, so there's three things we can use. We can use fasting. I love fasting because it literally doesn't cost you anything. Like I know a lot of people say like, oh, healing is really expensive. And I, I get it, it kind of can be, but there's a lot you can do that basically costs nothing. And nothing costs less than literally not even eating anything. You're literally doing nothing. So fasting is amazing because your body is going to go through and find these stores of toxicity and assuming it has the space to handle them, it's going to start to pull them out. It's going to start to pull them out. This is mycotoxins. This is the heavy metals. This is any chemicals that you've stored and deposited. And it's going to pull these out of these fatty tissues. So it's going to pull them out of the myelin in your brain. It's going to pull them out of the, the mitochondrial membrane. It's going to pull them out of your fat stores, out of that stubborn body fat that you can't lose. It's going to pull it out of all of these tissues. Another one is heat therapies. So this is like sauna, um, near and far infrared saunas. This is even like going in the sun, like anything that gets you hot is gonna stimulate your body, your cells to release their accumulated toxicity. Again, if you're trying to do that when your body's already overloaded, you're gonna feel bad. This is why people struggle with like heat intolerance and struggle with doing fasting is you're pulling things out faster than your body can handle them and that's not helping you, so stop doing it. But if you can and you can start incorporating these things and you feel okay doing it, the other day, well, last week, I did a 36-hour fast, and I felt amazing. That means my body has space to handle these things. I didn't have, like, low energy. I didn't feel crappy. I had a little bit of liver discomfort, which you would kind of expect. You know, you've got a lot of toxic bile that's being stored up while you're, while you're doing that. So be gentle with these things. You know, these are very powerful modalities. Finally, you've got bioresonance. Bioresonance can literally resonate your cell and force it to pull the toxin out. Again, you have to make sure you've done these last five steps. You have, if you're trying to do this last step and you haven't done all these other ones that come before it, when you do these things, you're just gonna feel worse. But these are really powerful options, bioresonance, fasting, and heat therapies. When you're able to open this pathway back up, so this pathway that takes 80 to 90% of toxicity, you're gonna see positive knock-ons on the other two systems behind it. So any respiratory problems, any urinary tract infections, any fungal infections, any skin problems that are, are results of accumulated toxicity that the body's trying to push out through these side systems will just go away. They will just disappear. You won't have these symptoms anymore. They will go away. And all of this immune dysfunction, so the mast cell activation, the multiple chemical sensitivities, the chronic inflammatory response syndrome, the body having uh, sensitivities to foods that you know, it shouldn't, like these are natural foods, like avocados and like sauerkraut and things like that these sensitivities will go away because your body has now rebuilt these mechanisms and any toxicity that it's being exposed to or this accumulated toxicity that it has is now being funneled out through this primary mechanism that the body wants to use to remove toxins. So if you're, having, if you're struggling with accumulated toxicity problems, so you've got mold, heavy metals, if you've got toxin exposures, glyphosate, this is where your focus has to be. This is how your body removes these things. You know, I didn't make this system up I was in exactly the same position where I would just, I couldn't eat anything. I was on a diet of five foods. I would pass out if I went to a petrol station or a gas station and I could just smell the fumes. You know, I could, I can remember someone sprayed like a fly killer and it literally, my, my gut just completely exploded. You know, I couldn't eat anything for days. Your body should be able to handle some level of toxicity. But if these systems are blocked, it, it, it can't. And this isn't a life sentence. Like, this is actually solvable. I've, I've been there. Like, I, the reason I teach this now, the reason I give you this content is I scoured the whole internet to try and find all of the data. I tried literally everything I could and all of the things that worked, I stuck together and I'm giving you this information now. And hopefully, because I've, I'm doing this from a position of I've lived it, I'm delivering this information to you in a way that is actually helpful. You can actually see, okay, this makes sense. Like, okay, there's a process. There's a methodology behind this. I didn't just make it up. I literally lived it. I've experienced this. And now I, I implement the same things with other people and see them get the same results. So this is, this, is, this is this process. This is how your body works. This is why it develops these symptoms. This is why it 
has these problems is this accumulated toxicity and not just the accumulated accumulated toxicity but the inability to detox it the inability to remove it so if we can do that and this isn't just like take a random supplement this isn't take a binder like that's not how detox works this, your body has these inbuilt intrinsic mechanisms that it uses to handle toxicity so you have to follow what the body does like i said i didn't like i didn't decide this was the way that it was i just found how it works i studied the body and tried to understand how it does these things naturally and then if you understand how it does it naturally you can figure out where it's getting stuck and then you can provide support so that it isn't stuck anymore and then you stop being stuck and you heal and that really is as, as simple as it gets so to summarize if anyone has any questions please do let me know i'll come to these after i've finished but just to summarize your body has three mechanisms that it uses to handle toxicity primary mechanism backup mechanism reserve mechanism if your primary mechanism is overwhelmed all of that work that it isn't able to keep up with gets shoved to these other two mechanisms the the secondary mechanism are your are your like your your extra detox pathways so these are your urine your sweat and your and your breath so it's coming out through the skin, the lungs, and the urine. These backup pathways, this isn't the way your body really wants to do it. If even that isn't enough, it will trigger an immune response. You will have, you will have mast cells activating. You will have immune reactions, basically, to these, to these chemicals, to these substances. Your body, is, your body doesn't want to do this, but it doesn't have any choice. It's either it does this or it basically dies. So it's going to do this. This is the best thing it can do. But trying to fix these two things doesn't make sense. We need to focus on this, this primary... 80 to 90 percent of where these toxins are going to leave your body and again i have another video that outlines these six steps that the body uses to do this in more detail you can go on youtube and you can search how the body detoxes mycotoxins william dickinson again always put my name because i'm not that i'm not that big yet I'm not that famous so you have to put my name otherwise you won't get the thing so put my name in there if you want to find the video of me talking about it and if you support those six steps so this is cell to blood this is blood being filtered through the liver, liver to bile, bile to microbiome, microbiome to bowel movement. If you support those six steps, and again, I didn't make this up. Like This is just how it works. I just discovered it, and now I'm trying to share this discovery with you. If you support those six steps that the body uses to remove toxins from the body, you heal. Like The, the body's natural state is healing. If it isn't healing, there's something stopping it from healing, and it's and it's... It is, it, is, it is a blockage in one of these six steps. So figure out where the blockage is. And again, start from the bottom up. So the bowel movements first, then the microbiome, then the bile, then the liver, then the circulation, then removing it actually from the cells, from the stored accumulated toxicity. Bottom up, otherwise you will have detox reactions, you'll have Herx reactions, you will feel really crap, and you're not actually helping yourself. You're just basically suffering for no reason because you're not doing it in the right order. Do it in the right order and you'll feel better you'll actually feel significantly better. When you do this in the right order and you work from the bottom up, as soon as your body, even if it isn't tapping its stores, as soon as it's on top of the toxicity that it's being exposed to, like 60 to 80% of your symptoms just disappear. It's crazy how I see like digestion improve, a bunch of like random inflammation symptoms like disappear, skin problems disappear, asthma like goes into remission, like it's, it's crazy. But healing is the long game, you know? But the long game of healing means set these systems up and then be patient get your body work get this mechanism working again and then just stick with it and be patient and your body will work through it over time so i hope you found this video really helpful if you do have any questions please let me know and i will see you in the next one bye bye so just doing that for the video so i can stick it on youtube so let's go to the comments so Matt, lovely to see you. Matt says, all chocolates seem to be high in heavy metals, lead and cadmium, both milk, dark chocolate, organic, non-organic chocolate. Yeah, the thing is, you're going to have some, you're going to have, you're always going to have some exposure in your food. You're, you're always going to be exposed to something, you know, it's, your body can handle some, but it needs to, you need to make sure you have these mechanisms, like, open. You need to make sure these mechanisms work. Uh, Matt also says, saw research that tea plant absorbs heavy metals from the soil too. Yet yeah, health gurus say tea, de tea detoxes toxic metals from you. Not sure if it does or if it contains it. Yeah, th this is the thing. Like you can get, um, you can get activated char a lot of activated charcoal and binder supplements are actually full of heavy metals. The thing is, they're bound. And assuming your gut lining is strong, you have a strong integrity, they're, they're going to stay bound and you're not going to have a problem. So with these teas, like yes, maybe they do accumulate toxins. But 
every every binder or everything that has the ability to absorb heavy metals has a it has a saturation point and it's unlikely that it's that this that these things have hit saturation point while they're in the soil maybe they're 60 percent full of toxins there's still 40 percent left and they can stimulate a, a healing effect in the body so you are always going to be exposed in the world that we live in now you you can't avoid it like there's just there's too much plastic there's too much mercury we've burnt too many things that put toxins into the atmosphere they rain like it's it's polluted but you just have to do what you can and what you can do is make sure that your mechanisms are working make sure that these things are actually turned on so your body is able to handle what it's exposed to um brett nice to see you brett uh, Brett says, just use a zeolite or something like uh, CT mineral cell core. So yeah, you can use a binder. Binders, exactly, as I, as I just kind of said, binders will bind with things. Um, that's one way that you can you can hold the, you can you can basically bind that toxicity. One thing about binders is they do cause constipation for some people. And if, you, if you're going to break that last step in that process, it probably won't feel as good. So if binders work for you, then use them. But if they don't, don't. I actually generally don't use binders. Binders are things, something that don't really work for me in general and I'll use them very targetedly like I used to use a small amount of activated charcoal after doing a coffee enema or I had food poisoning like two weeks three weeks ago um, that was a really nice time to use a binder as well basically combining that with fasting stopped the food poisoning in like 24 hours which was pretty pretty good so that's all the questions that we had so I hope you found this video really helpful I hope you find it really interesting and if you have any more questions and you want to leave me a leave me a comment I will get back to you. Just make sure that you tag me so that I know that you've uh, sent me a thing so I get a notification. Obviously, I can't respond to your message if I don't know you've you've left me a comment. So if you need me, you can always shoot me an email, support at williamdickinson.co.uk or leave me a comment and say, like, I want to chat, I need some help, um, I have a question. Whatever you need, just let me know. I'm here to help you heal. So take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.